In the last lesson in this series, we're going to draw a vase in Adobe Illustrator. I'll call it the vector vase. You should be on Artboard 6 of the file Art186 Shape Tools, Command 0 to get in uh, everything into the window. And we're going to use the object tools we become familiar with in other lessons. Here I'm starting with the rounded rectangle tool. And matching that as best I can. Go now to the ellipse tool. And if I don't get it in quite the right position, I could just hold down my space bar. And as long as I don't pick my mouse button up, I can move that around. There, I'm happy with that. Let me zoom in here so I can see a little bit better. Back to the rounded rectangle. and to the ellipse. Holding down my space bar. There, that's a pretty good match, Command-0. I want these all to be horizontally aligned. So if I go to my selection tool and I select all four shapes, I can see that my align tools pop up in my control panel. I need to make sure this is set align to selection and then I just click on the button horizontal align center and that pulls everything into perfect alignment for me. Next what I want to do is edit this egg-like shape so that it gets to be a more graceful vase-like shape. So I'm going to go to my direct selection tool for fine editing click off to deselect and then just select those center points. I think the easiest way to do this is to just use the arrow key on my keyboard and just hold that down until I'm happy with the shape. I think that looks pretty good so I'm going to stick with that. Um, the next thing I want to do is to, in order to create this flat bottom over here, is I need to get rid of this bottom curve on my base shape. So I'm going to zoom in on that, go to my direct selection tool, and I'm going to go over here till my little green label says anchor, and I know I found the anchor point that way. I'm just going to click on that point and hit my delete key. And that got rid of that. So all I need to do now is join these two. And that's very easy to do. I'm going to click off to deselect. Select those two endpoints, being sure nothing else is selected. And then go to Object, Path, Join. If you get an error message with the Join command that says you must have two points of open paths selected, that means that somehow accidentally you had something else selected. So just click off and make sure that you only have two points selected. So at this point we're right here and what we want to do is get the, our shapes to just barely overlap so that we can merge them with the Shape Builder tool. So I want them to look like that. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to go to my outline view. The reason for that is that this way um, the weight of my strokes will not distract me. So I'm just going to select with the selection tool this top shape. I'm just going to knock it down with the arrow key until I can see it's just barely intersecting. Hold down my space bar so that I get my grabber hand. Might as well select both of these. And I'm going to move this up until once again I can see it's just barely overlapping. A little difficult here because you can also see the template, but I think you can figure out which are yours. Okay, just barely overlapping. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go back to preview mode and command zero. And now if I select all four of these shapes with my selection tool, I'm going to go to my shape builder tool. 
and I should, if I've got them overlapping, I should be able to just drag right through. Notice my Shape Builder tool has a plus. That means it's going to add the shapes together. Perfect. So now I have a pretty good looking vase here. Almost matches exactly the one that I did on the template. So the last thing I want to do is add uh, a gradient to make my vase look a little more three-dimensional. So I'm going to make sure it's selected and go to my swatches up here, my fill box, and choose a light brown radial. I don't really like where that center of that gradient is coming, but that's very easy to adjust with the gradient tool. I select the gradient tool and my gradient slider should pop up. And then I can just move the center of the gradient there. And this also gives me the ability to change the way that the gradient displays, or if I double click on this slider, I can even adjust the color. So I'm going to go a slightly darker color here. Very good. Back to the selection tool. And I'm going to get rid of the stroke because I don't think it needs a black outline. I don't need that anymore. And the very last thing I want to do is to add, to sort of liven my design up by using a brush to add this geometric pattern. Now when I draw this pattern, I don't want it to extend past the edges of my vase because I want it to look like it's wrapping around. So I'm going to go down here onto my control, uh, my tool panel and choose draw inside mode right there. Draw inside mode. Now if, in order to use a brush I have to have a path for that um, brush to follow. So I'm going to choose my arc tool which we've used before and notice this um, dashed line around here indicates that I'm in draw inside mode. That means that I can draw this line across here and know that only the part that's inside the vase is going to show. I used my arc tool even though I'm drawing kind of a straight line here and the fact that I used the arc tool means that my line has control handles. And it's a little tricky to find them but there you go. I wanted to make it a little bit curved there. So I'm using my control handle. Now to get to my brushes, I go over here to my brushes panel and for my brush libraries, I'm going to go to borders and then a borders frames. Now nah, I don't see anything I like there. So let's look again. and look at Borders Decorative. Oh yes, this is much more promising. Here's the one that I like. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And I could try various other ones and see which one I like. Any one of these could work. That one's kind of nice, but I like this one. So I'm going to go with that. And you can see that once I click off, that now my pattern is wrapping nicely around my vase. And the uh, vase and the pattern will, I'm just going to go back to normal drawing mode here. And now that vase and that pattern will move around together.